You want to support Roller March Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real as Roller Martin Unfiltered. Support the Roller Martin Unfiltered daily digital show by going to RollerMartinUnfiltered.com. You can make this possible. A couple weeks ago, we talked about uh, a report that was done when the Collective Pack said they did a polling that was done by a Black-owned firm, uh, Dr. Cohen Belcher, that said Black people were against defund the police. Now, Terrence Woodbury, Hit Strategies, has a report that shows uh, Black folks' view on defunding the police and police reform that's a little different. Uh, Terrence Jones is right now. Is Terrence there? Hey, All right, Roland, Terrence, how's how you going? doing? How's it going, brother? Thanks for having me on. All right, then. So we're going to ask you some questions here. We've got Michael Brown on Congo Dominga, Ava, Dr. Avis Jones de Weaver. And so we're going to uh, chat about this here. So uh, let's talk about this uh, this polling data. You've been spending lots of time out in the field talking to black folks and uh, Democrats have been saying, oh, they've been getting killed. People don't want against uh, defund the police, even black folks. But you say that's not necessarily true. That's exactly right, Roland. Uh, you know, attitudes about policing and defund have been evolving in the black community since 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 last summer, since the summer of unrest, when we really saw folks taken to the streets to express uh, frustration after George Floyd. And for the first time, uh, our recent polling of uh, Black Track poll, a poll that we conduct every month, shows 53% of Black people support defunding the police. And even more interesting is when we ask if they supported uh, reallocating resources away from the police and overhauling police, 67% support. And this is across all groups rolling across black men, black women, under 50, over 50, even black conservatives. A majority of black conservatives say that they support reallocating resources away from the police and, uh, and, and, and overhauling. And so I think it is, it, it, it's incumbent upon Democrats now to figure out how they're, going to, how they're going to start talking about this and even more important, how they're going to start getting it done. Is that because black people know what defund the police is they understand the difference uh and they're not falling for uh the okie doke from uh republicans is that what the difference here is well that see that's a part of the problem here roland is that we are allowing republicans to define defund thankfully activists have done a very good job organizations like campaign zero color of change uh and black lives matter global network have done a very good job of of, of redefining defund so that black people do not uh, think that the, only, that, 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 that the only outcome is abolishing the police. But at this point, the Democratic Party really has to lean into this. Now that their most loyal voters um, are evolving on this issue and are saying that this is what they, what they expect, then it's now incumbent on Democrats to figure out which elements of defund are actually appealing to people um, and to start redefining, re redefining this issue. The fact of the matter is, Roland, defund is going to be with defund is going to be a huge part of the 2022 cycle. Uh, we already see Republicans uh, in races like the congressional race in, in New Jersey too, uh, beginning to lean into uh, uh, and 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 paint um, Democrats as as anti-police. So if Democrats ignore this, or even worse, begin to treat our activists like they are our opposition, then it doesn't mean that the community that 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 the community doesn't hear about defund, it means they're only hearing about it from Republicans. Uh, Michael Brown. Terrence, I understand the great work you're doing. Congratulations, by the way, on, on hit strategies. Um, you know, in polling, uh, and uh, as a former elected official, you know, poll, obviously we rely on polling quite a bit. Um, why do you think there's such a dichotomy between a whole lot of folks that seem to say, yeah, defund the, the police. And then people that say, oh, absolutely not. We need police to protect our neighborhoods. There's just such a difference. Why do you think that is? Because it's so strange to see some. I mean, it's one thing if it was you know, one or two or even five point difference, but this is a major gap, yeah. depending on which pollster, obviously, you talk to. That's right, Michael. And frankly, even depending on when you talk to them, this polling has changed um, drastically since the last time we asked the question. And I want to point out a couple of things, because I think you're asking, you're raising the right questions here. One is that, you know, when we say 53 percent of black people support defunding the police, that means almost half of black people don't. Right. That's that, that that's that's the other side of that coin. And so this is a trend line that we see moving. 
But it does not mean that all black people want to defund the police. In fact, it means that half of them do not want to defund the police. The second thing I think is important is, is you know, is the, the timestamp of which of when we're asking this question. Um, another question that we, that we asked during this poll was, uh, was whether or not uh, uh, the, the police treatment of black people and minorities was improving since the Chauvin trial. And 58, 56% of black people said that it has not improved and they don't expect uh, um, police, police treatment of black people to improve post the trial. And so I think that what we're beginning to see is a frustration uh, with, with the system, but also, you know, th this is all ha these things aren't happening in a vacuum, right? The, the attitudes about defunding the police are also happening in a, uh, in a context where we see increase in crime and violence. So in the same poll where a majority of black people say that they want, uh, that they support defunding the police, when we ask them in the same poll, what were the top issue priorities for their community? We see gun violence and crime rising as a higher priority even than, uh, than criminal justice reform. And this is new, you know, crime and violence is not, has not been a top three or top five issue in the black community in quite a while here. And so to see violence and crime rising above healthcare during a pandemic, rising above criminal justice reform, it really does show the, the, the nuance and the uh, diversity within the, within the opinions of the black community. Thank you, Terrence. Oma Congo. Thank you very much for, for, for the work that, that you're doing in, in this space. And we've been talking this whole show about honoring black voices and black partnerships in corporate spaces. So as we move over to the political side, do you feel like these politicians, Democrat, Republican, are listening to the voices of, of hit strategies and the work that, that you're doing? Are they taking black pollsters seriously? Has it started to change? Where do we stand with that? Uh, you know, we still have a lot of work to do. And if they are listening uh, to us tonight, then then someone from from the party is going to give us a call because defund is the single biggest issue that I believe we must solve in, uh, moving into this next election cycle. It is a, a, a tool, a weapon that has been I'm sorry, a term that has been weaponized uh, by the right and that we need to that we now need to reclaim. Um, but but, you know, I mean, there's still significant work to be done here. Um, black black voters remain very optimistic and even very supportive of the Democratic Party. We see folks, we see Joe Biden reaching uh, eighty six percent approval, Kamala Harris at seventy eight percent, and Democrats even at eighty one percent. You know, Joe Biden is nearing Obama level uh, job approval here. You know, Obama was was at ninety four ninety five percent. So to see Biden really hitting that um, hit, hitting hitting marks this high, I think it shows. A level of trust and even a a um, a cautious optimism in the black community, but but that's also that that is that is that is in the context of uh, of an economic crisis that is affecting black folks in the context of uh, of, of increased crime and violence, and in the context of, of them still demanding pretty significant and swift action on criminal justice. So uh, the the optimism and the support is there. But it's it it is broader than it is deep, and and Democrats have a lot of work to do. Mm -hmm. All right, Avis. Um, hi there. So I have a question about the specifics of unpacking the definition of that question on your survey, because I heard that you said that you asked about opinions around defunding, and then I heard you also ask about opinions around reallocating. I was wondering if you had another question on your survey where it just straight up asked people, what do they think defund the police means and provided a wide range of options so that we can really get a sense of how people unpack it. Because unfortunately, I really don't think it's quite as clear to the populace as we like to think it is. It, it, you're absolutely right, it was, it's not clear. And that's a part of what the, of what, uh, the left has to do now. It's a part of what Democrats have to do is, 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 is to begin defining this. You know, the, the fact of the matter is there are a lot of elements within uh, the defund movement, the defund platform that are quite popular to the general public. Things like, uh, you know, investing in social service, um, uh, uh, um, nonviolent first responders, conflict mediation. These are all elements of, def uh, of, of the defund movement, demilitarization, uh, training in, in, less lethal, uh, um, in, in less lethal use of force, 
These are all elements of the of the defund platform that are actually quite popular amongst the general public, not just black people and not just Democrats, but amongst the general public. And this is where Democrats have to stop saying, um, have to have to find a better response here than uh, being against defund, than, than, than treating our activists like opposition and start saying what they are for, um, especially when we can prove when there are, when we can show proof points around the country of how these these policies have actually made people safer and you just don't see this on the right you know you you don't see republicans treating pro life activists or pro gun activists like they are their opposition in fact they are their greatest asset and so as long as as long as democrats have this rub with our activists then we are uh we're not we're not harnessing the the uh, the most energy that that we have in the party and and that's going to a lot of that is going to 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 hinge on how we address this issue. All right, then, uh, Terrence Wilberry, folks are asking, they want to be able to see the results of this. Where could they actually go read it for themselves? Absolutely. Please follow us at hitstrat. I'm sorry, at hitstrat on Twitter or on, on our website, hitstrat.com. Uh, and also you can find an answer to Avis's question there about how folks are defining defund. All right, then, Terrence Wilberry, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it. Thanks, Roland. Folks, back to our Mark Untouched video in just one moment. Racial injustice is a scourge on this nation, and the black community has felt it for generations. We have an obligation to do something about it. Whether it's canceling student debt, increasing the minimum wage, or investing in black owned businesses, the black community deserves so much better. I'm Nina Turner, and I'm running for Congress to do something about it.